Every year, we take this month of February to honor the contributions of African Americans to this country. The idea started in a YMCA on the south side of Chicago that served as a safe space for black people. Lauren Jiggets takes us to that building that houses the history of Black History Month. This building was history. Remember the past, restore the promise. It's reflected in every painstakingly restored detail of the former historic Wabash YMCA in Bronzeville. Built in 1911 and completed in 1913, it was largely financed by Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears Roebuck, and it became the first YMCA for African Americans in the Midwest. Because this was the place. This was the only place. The building often found itself at the intersection of race, perseverance, and progress. So because it was a YMCA, it was considered a safe space. Patricia Abrams is the executive director of the Renaissance Collaborative. They took on the challenge of restoring the building and preserving its history. I just had to take a stance that we would not tear it down and put a marker up and say this was. We just needed to work with the, everybody to save it, and I think that was a testament of what the Y had meant, this particular building had meant to the African American community from the time it, that it was developed in 1911. And the preservation of history is the heart and soul of this building. It was here at 38th and Wabash that Black History Month was born. Dr. Carter G. Woodson had been barred from attending American Historical Association conferences despite being a dues-paying member. Inspired by his experiences at the Y and the Bronzeville neighborhood, he and a small group met here at the YMCA and formed the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. And in 1926, he created Negro History Week. It was really around lifting up those African Americans who had made great contributions to the American society, but they were not recognized as such. Dr. Woodson found little desire amongst white historians to recognize black history, and so he sought to record and preserve those accomplishments on his own. Most of them had been stolen. And you know, when you steal something and put a patent on it, it becomes yours. While Woodson was preserving history here, the building fueled the present. It was an academic, social, and cultural center. Babies were weighed here. African Americans finally had a place to learn to swim, and women joined the swim team. Pullman porters had a place to sleep, and it was a place for men to collect their paychecks during the race riots. This was considered a safe space. So although people could not cross over State Street, they, they could take the train to work. They could only pick up their checks here. In the ballroom, William Edward Scott unveiled this mural in 1936, a young man in a big city looking at the original YMCA symbol, surrounded by avenues of opportunity. And yet the once bustling rooms here grew quiet and the building fell into disrepair in the 70s. Most of this was in shambles. It was a long journey. The Renaissance Collaborative fundraised and found specialized craftsmen to tackle the intricate details. The community has a role to play in the safety and welfare of future generations. So we saved this building primarily for the people who were going to come afterwards. And it's still a work in progress, but it's a living landmark over 110 years of history that continues today. It's once again a community resource, including supportive housing, job training, and a culinary program. A rebirth for the historic Wabash YMCA. I think when we don't remember our past, we forget from which we've come and how far we've come. Lauren Jiggetts, WGN News. That building added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1986. The historic, historic, I should say, Wabash Y, offers guided tours the second Saturday of every month. Living landmark.